Hey everyone, I'm Cody. And I'm Brent. And we are the Hugo Knots, here to review and discuss the best sci-fi books of all time. This week, we are talking about Children of Time. And make sure you like, subscribe, follow, download, whatever you do to listen to us um, to not miss the next episode on The Forever War. Very excited. We are interviewing Joe Haldeman, the author, to, to talk about The Forever War, one of the absolute, no doubt, greatest sci-fi books of all time. Um, super great anti-war novel. So, um, yeah, please, please do subscribe and follow to, to be able to, to, to hear that one next week. Um, and then this week, we have some really exciting news as well. Um, Hassan is joining us. He's a listener who reached out and wanted to, to jump on the show and talk about sci-fi with us. And we're so excited to do that. Hey, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, if you want to do do the same in the future, please do reach out. Send us an email, uh, huguenotspodcast at gmail.com. Um, we've had a lot of fun. Uh, getting ready for this and, and doing this with Hassan. So um, would love to, to, to get more sci-fi fans on the show to talk about great books. So, yeah. Absolutely. So like I said, and welcome, Hassan. So like I said, Children of Time this week. Children of Time is a 2014 science fiction novel by Adrian Tchaikovsky. When we talked with Hassan, we all ended up talking about Children of Time and we're like, why don't we review that? for your episode. Um, that'd be a really fun thing to talk about. It's about 609 pages, 16 and a half hours on audiobook. I loved the audiobook um, recording of this one particularly. Uh, and Brent, I would love to hear a summary of it. Maybe Hassan would too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Children of Time is uh, set in the future, as you might expect. And Earth has been destroyed in a cataclysm that happens off screen. We don't really know what happened. Um, but just before the fall, uh, a scientific ship was sent out to a nearby star system and terraformed a planet and dropped a super evolutionary nanovirus onto that planet. And it starts working on insects and spiders. And then uh, generations after that, humanity sort of like recolonizes the, the solar system a little bit. They're able to get enough technology together to send out a few arc ships uh, to go out to those terraformed planets. And uh, so over the, the book follows two narratives. One is on the terraformed planet where we see uh, the evolution of various spiders and spider characters and ants across many, many, many generations as they advance through technology. And another narrative that follows uh, the events aboard the Ark ship Gilgamesh, which is sent in its human cargo as they wake up and go back to cryo sleep over many, many, many eons as they travel to this system and, and beyond. So that's that's Children of Time. Hassan, why don't you go first? What's your what's your rating and review? Um, I give this a four out of five stars. It's a it's a great book. Um, when I first read this, this is my reread, but when I first read this, it changed my perception of how alien creatures sh should be written, and this does it perfectly, even though they're not completely alien. Um, they have everything is explained. Their culture is influenced by their biology, and their biology influences their culture. It's a fleshed out system and everything makes sense. Why I didn't give it five stars, it's mostly because of the human part and because of how it juxtapositions, but I don't mind the human stuff. It's, some of it is pretty good, but that's what I thought of the book. Excellent. Yes, I also gave it four out of five stars. Um, I just thought it was a cool, you know, two of my favorite sci-fi tropes side by side. We've got uh, arc ship, generation ship, and then we've got um, uplift, uh, biological evolution of a new alien species and they kind of act parallel and then interact at various points um, and I thought he brought them together well I loved Children of Time it was also a reread for me and I liked it just as well maybe even better the second time okay well I'll be the hater then this episode I'm gonna give it a three out of five um, I was so gripped and absolutely loved the first like half to two thirds of this book um, toward the end um, I think it got it fell off a little bit, and the uh, as, as Hassan, as you were mentioning, the the some of the human parts. Um, uh, I get frustrated when when people act too dumb in books. Uh, I don't think people are dumb. I think when people like really try to think about things, tend to be pretty smart. Um, and yeah, it just. Uh, yeah, it just fell off for me somewhat as it went along. So I, I still think it's a great book. Highly recommend you read it. Um, but yeah, I do think it was one of those books that, that falls into the the somewhat classic, like incredibly strong opening, like less incredibly strong finish. I'm just gonna put like a like a crowd booing sound effect <laughs> over the whole time. Um, Somebody's got to be uh, the hater. This week it's me. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Just say you know, 
we're about the opinions. Um, so why doesn't somebody, no matter who, tell me about the plot? Why don't we start there? We can dive in. Um, I would say in terms of, I think the, so each chapter basically follows um, either a generation of the spiders um, or uh, uh, some events happening like in a wake up cycle for the humans. Um, and the short stories about the spiders are just unbelievably gripping and interesting. Um, these like obstacles that they're trying to overcome as they they deal with this world they're in and, and um, the development and society building there, I thought was just incredible. So I thought that was like the strongest part of the plot for me was like these these sort of recurring vignettes uh, following generations of the spiders. Right. And, and the human element is almost there to um, give us something emotional to grab onto. Because, right, I mean, we're, we're acting pretty casual about it yeah. so far, but it is, you know, a book about ha that's half about giant spiders and their society and and describing them physically in great detail, which is not for most people, uh, you know, that's the stuff of horror and not science fiction. Yeah, um, for me, for sure. I don't know about you guys, but I am like deeply afraid of spiders. I still have to be spider guy in my house, which I don't like. But like anyway, yeah, I'm terrified and I cannot believe that Tchaikovsky got me to like empathize with and like spiders it's like unbelievable to me it's it's a testament to how good this book is i i, I would agree with that and i think it's more um it, it, it's a bigger accomplishment just because of how um not human the spiders are it, they don't follow that human mold of what we think of civilization where you have to hit these checkpoints like first you got to be an, an agriculture society and then you got to uh, have your industrial revolution and the space race it doesn't follow that at all they go their own separate way and that what is what makes them intriguing to me. I, I thought it was so unique, and I just hadn't seen it done before, and I, I was really impressed with it. Yeah, that combination of like how how he succeeds in making us empathize with giant spiders, and and how he makes them different, and um, according to their own biology, they build their society differently. They um, they build different technologies. They have different religious function, which is kind of specific um to the book uh but but they also um to for him to make him, us empathize with them and for him to have created this different species that is uh that has different drives is is really an achievement i think um yeah what did you the, uh, what did you think so he did something really interesting to sort of like keep us empathizing with the spiders over time what did you guys think of the the spider names uh through the generations I thought it was a really unique way of um, showing a through line, showing the consistency and showing how each generation retains something from the last generation. You can kind of think of them as archetypes, even though over the time, these characters don't stick with archetypes. And I say characters like um, they're individual characters, but again, they're not. They're multiple generations of characters. And I thought that was a good way to keep us um, invested in them. Right. Like part of the, the deal with the nanovirus as it's released at the beginning, right, is that it um, it encodes in, in the DNA of, of the spiders, who is the, the species that it latches onto as well as the ants, but encodes specifically in the spiders um, like sensory and cognitive uh, memories. So like each new generation of spiders – lived the life has the experiences in its brain and encoded in its dna of its previous generations so we see like portia is one of the main characters who's a spider and we see the different portias through time even though they're not literally the same being they're they're from the same line and so they share these memories which is a really cool way of um being able to follow a character, even though it's not the same character, and get across the the point of passage of time, um, you, you see it done in some stuff. Uh, most recently, for me, I saw it in the uh, the Apple adaptation of Foundation by Asimov. Um, it's not in the book, but they the the character, the Emperor, they do through three emperors. There's dusk, uh, or there's dawn, day, and dusk, and there's three emperors, and they're all one clone. Um, and so he's, they, they 
do foundation through the same character, the same actor, basically, to make it more palatable for TV. Um, similar way of doing things, um, and I think it it really works here um, to give us to give us characters to go through the book, but also have a giant timeline. So what about the the human characters? We've been talking a lot about the spiders because I think we all sort of think that's the best part. But we've got we got some compelling, somewhat compelling human characters too, right? What's going on with them? The human characters, um, I, I appreciated them more now on my reread. Um, they have an interesting dynamic, especially between Holston and Lane. There's a lot of theorist versus engineer, like practical stuff, um, which seem to ring true you know, when I see these real life encounters with these types of people. It felt authentic and it felt real. I wonder if the author had uh, real life experience with these types of people because with the human characters, those are the ones that came to life the most to me. The ones that are in security, they are a lot weaker and less compelling, at least to me. The security, Cast. like Karst, um, yeah. Tarsk, Karst, yeah, Karst. Karst. There you go. I, you know, I found, I, I found that he had a good, he had a good um, arc, a satisfying yeah. arc. Yeah, um, he evolved, which was nice. Yeah, he changed by the end. Yeah, yeah, he was. I agree with you. He wasn't super deep, but he did change, and I love it. It's that's rare, honestly, yes. to have when authors actually change the characters. So, um, yeah, um, but but I did think there was there was definitely some flatness uh, around them, but they're kind of also like the core of you know uh, like keeping us emotionally invested in the book, right? It's like the emotional through line because like because uh, uh, Tchaikovsky is writing as you said Hassan in your in your rating like a Tchaikovsky writes the spiders so well and you can tell um that he he studied zoology in under as an undergraduate um and then he was a legal executive he's from the UK um and originally Polish um he's from the UK he's Polish uh but he was a le- he's a legal executive until 2018, which is kind of cool. Um, total digression there about Tchaikovsky. But yeah, anyways, I mean, there's a, there's like a sub story saying- there about how hard it is to make money as a writer. He was a published writer for 10 years before he was finally like, okay, I made enough, like making enough money, I can stop doing legal work. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Hassan, as you were bringing up yesterday when we were talking about this in like pre production, um, you can kind of sense that he's. A zoologist, right? Like the human characters are doing the emotion; they're bringing us in. But, but really, his 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 um his purpose to be there is the spiders, yeah, right? The, the spiders are so fl- fleshed out, um, even though they don't really have flesh. <laughs> they uh, c- compared to the humans who don't seem that fleshed out, and a lot of the stuff. Um, somebody also mentioned it um, yesterday, where they, it's almost fantasy. There's no hard science. In the humans, in the human narrative, but in the spider narrative, everything is broken down. Everything is explained, and that contrast I think was a big problem for me on my first read because you would be so invested in the spider narrative, you would, and usually when the spider narrative ends, like on each chapter, it's it's with a cliffhanger. So you're like, oh, now I got to go back to the humans. Like, come on, I just want to come back to the spiders. But on the second read. Uh, where I just took my time, I, 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 it wasn't that big of a problem for me. But I can definitely see where some readers would really dislike the human stuff. I didn't really dislike it, but yeah, I just it didn't uh, it didn't feel as real at all, yeah. and um, it wasn't as exciting. Also, yeah. frankly, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for sure. There's an el- there there there's an element of flip flopping your brain has to flip flop a little bit, right? Cause you have to, you have to be into one story that's about emotion and like a romantic through line. And what would it be like, like to wake up for a couple weeks every couple hundred years and live this like Methuselahic life. Um, and then also like hard, how are the spiders <laughs> building stuff? What is their technology? What is the action here? The, and, and, and f- flopping between the two, if you like, both of them, I think, is really satisfying, but it, uh, I guess, um, it could seem inconsistent, especially if you're like way more into one than the other. Yeah. So let's talk about the spider technology a little bit more because there was one concept in here that was like so. I don't think it's possible, but it's so cool to think about. So they they figure out basically how to split off this like genetic memory that's in their DNA and like turn it into a packet and hand it to someone else, and literally, if they like 
touch this thing, they will like learn how to you know do the skill that you have have like packaged up here. Um, and it's just you know that's such a deeply cool idea, right? Like who doesn't want to be able to like learn how to do something immediately? Um, the understandings, the understandings, yeah. yeah it was just, and they be, I, yeah. they become an economic device too, yeah. right? Yeah, it was like the, the it was like a literal way to trade information. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, you guys know how to do this. You know, the spider colony knows how to do this thing. We know how to do this thing. We, we can literally trade that information and then replicate it and give it to all the people in our society. Um, so I don't, while I don't think that that is possible, it is at least not with like DNA. Um, it is so cool to think about. And it just led to such an interesting way for their society to work. Yeah, I really liked it quite a lot. I think what makes it more compelling is how real it feels even though like you said it's, it's basically impossible um but th that's the thing you take the impossible and you treat it like it's real and then you all the rest has to be realistic or the impossible thing will not land and i think that is why the technology feels so authentic and it feels so inspired because the creatures using the spiders using the technology they use it in ways that make sense and are realistic to their uh, to their lives, even though the technology itself is not real, which lends it so much more gravitas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He he totally succeeded in that, I think. Which is to which is to bring it back to the humans while you have to kind of flop your mindset is because we're talking about uh mainly cryosleep, um, which has been, you know, pretty much been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, generation ships Love also are like word, mostly but... mostly out. It seems like arc ships wouldn't work. Machines just don't machines don't work for thousands of years either. Um but yeah, it's it almost I don't know. It didn't bug me because the there was novel interesting stuff here. I feel like you're allowed to like lean on old tropes when you like do you have some new interesting thing to yeah. to talk about. It's just it's just almost more like fantasy meets science fiction versus like hard science fiction with the spiders right you get this this um this like we want to explore this fun idea of cryosleep and and living through the ages um and there's no real hard scientific way to do that with a same literal person so we'll explore it over here with the spiders in generations and then with the humans we'll just why don't we just do cryosleep and um you know uh, there's also a lot of um you know, or or some we have some artificial intelligence, right, Hassan? We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, there's some there's some AI aspects here. Um, it leads into some cyberpunk uh, genre stuff, like the there's some mind uploading going on, which uh, it's not specifically only the cyberpunk. Of course, Diaspora, great novel, has some of that in it, um, but it catches you off guard, and it he really explores it in in this world. So these old ideas, stuff we've seen before in this setting, in this world that he's created, they seem to have more juice in them and, and lemons that you think that were squeezed a long time ago. So doing that alone is an impressive feat. That's a fun metaphor. <laughs> in lemons you think were squeezed a long time ago. You should you should write some stuff. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to reading some of your screenplays one day. The other thing we get a lot of here uh, is is in the in the history of humanity is like the and, and compared to the spiders, right? Uh, like you were saying about the technology earlier, is is kind of the um, in your words innovation versus mimicry. Yeah. So this, I think, for me, that was the theme that hit the most, and I, I just loved that that theme that um, basically in the novel set up pretty early that the. The humans around, they're just basically copying what their ancestors did because they came from an ancestry with a lot higher technology. So they're basically just repeating it instead of innovating on their own way. And it comes up later when humans interact with spiders that one way of thinking is like you're locked into that line, that train of thought. And if you just keep doing what they're doing, you're going to make the same mistakes. Instead of going a different way, a, there is a, always going to be another way. But as humans, we like to uh, unify over time. Um, and when we do that, ways of thinking are lost to the past. And I thought that theme was excellently explored in the novel. 
and it doesn't hit you over the head. It, it's, uh, it's there if you want it, but you can also just ignore it completely. For sure. But you, but Brent, you didn't, you didn't um, love all of that, right? I, That's part of the thing for you. Yeah, like I... There was like a fundal def- like fundamental defeatism about humanity that like when authors do it it rubs me a little bit the wrong way. It was just like oh humans are like uh it sort of it, it sort of like takes it for granted that you assume like humanity is intrinsically flawed and we're bad at stuff and I like I don't know, I'm an optimist. I don't agree with that premise. I think we're really good at solving problems when we have to. Like world generally gets better. So yeah, it, it definitely pushed that button of mine, which uh you know is is uh, uh you know, that's really a me thing, but uh but yeah. I would like to add that um, to your point, that these characters are supposedly the best humanity has to offer. I mean, they mentioned they left so many people behind. So you, ex- I can understand the expectation that these are the best of the best and they should act that way. Um, and I can understand wanting that future of humanity getting better over time. Um, it's like that Star Trek utopia idea, and I, I'm totally into it. Um, but I think the repetition of history is is what is is going on here and how human egos clash even with people who are supposedly the best and and it definitely rang true in some parts and i could definitely feel like maybe the author worked with scientists who were trying to take credit or all this other stuff and i was like i'm compelled i'm compelled yeah i mean some would argue even that egos are always going to clash among the the best of humanity right that there's some kind of requirement of ego to being the quote best that's not the thing that bothered me it was like the i don't know it's hard to talk about without without getting into spoiler territory but it was just like bad decision bad decision making basically but in any case we can i think we can leave this we've 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 beat this horse quite a bit um one one thing that i would love to talk about is the um the spider society is sort of like flipped in gender roles from from ours um so the women are like very much in charge of spider society for the first half of of the book and i think that led to some really interesting stuff and and, and he borrowed parallels from our history right yeah it's a it's a matriarchal society compared to our human history of mostly patriarchal societies um they there was a couple beats without without going too much into spoilers a lot of um progress in our history for women and remember progress is not like a always guarantee there's there's ups and there's downs and that's also represented here there are times where it looks like progress is going to keep going in the novel and it recedes which is true in history and one of those times was um you know the events of the black plague and how women got more rights after that and in during the world war world war ii you know women more women in the workforce but again as things normalized things receded you know their rights went back People expected them to leave the workplace and give jobs to men and all, all these types of stuff. Um, and this is reflected somewhat in the novel, but spider civilization and human civilization are distinct and unique to each other. And seeing how that we may share similarities, but the differences, it also makes the differences uh, more appealing to read about. And... And specifically here, the the comparison of the plague being that um, when we hit these these times of necessity as a society, as a nation, culture, whatever group we're talking about, um, that's the that's the best time that that uh, we have to question our traditions and our our um, morals. I think there are a lot of really good parallels there to sort of you know our own slow but 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 progressing move toward toward gender equality in our in our society and uh you know i hope we can i hope we can keep walking the path the spiders figured it out hopefully we i think the humans do too because Uh, there's a lot of female characters and they're not treated as they're basically treated as equals they're being females not commented on you know like oh my god i can't believe a woman is in charge of this project like it's totally um like totally not mentioned which i thought was great because it makes you think okay this makes sense in humanity's future that Basically, there's that equality, which I really liked. How it wasn't really mentioned; it was just inferred. Yeah, and the and the final thing um, here, kind of thematically, that we were interested in discussing is is um, the how we see religion developing um, through the spiders. 
Yeah, they they basically have there's like a priest class who is you know very interested in technology for a period of time, but anyway, there's a lot of basically parallels to like the Middle Ages in 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 our history when there was, you know, religion and and intellectualism have always been you know, related. And in some periods of our history, like the most intelligent people were sort of like the priestly classes and they were the ones, you know, doing scientific advancements. And then over time that has, you know, ebbed and flowed. And, and this is a really good, interesting way to explore that. Um, yeah, I, I, I like books that dig into that. You know, the, the middle ages are an interesting, interesting period of time to think about. So I think this is a really novel way to, to kind of poke into that, that, uh, that line of thinking. The idea that the very beginning of the book is that the nanovirus is released by a scientist who is in a capsule, basically, that's orbiting the planet forever. Um, and the spiders start, you know, be, know that it's there um, and it's trying to communicate with them. And that's their god. And there's an interesting development of the relationship over the period of the novel um, between the, the spider's understanding of um, their their own existential like place in the universe and what God means in their relationship with God and and the universe at large, um, which I thought was really well done. I, I would also like to add that I just think like religious characters or like priestly characters in science fiction it, it is so compelling to me. Um, James Blish did it in a case of consciousness, which I mean I have my issues with that book, but it's a great example. Um, there was a character in Hyperion that was also like that. And, you know, Deep Space Nine, it's a television show, also explored that. And I think the the contrast of trying to look at numbers and science, but also trying to fit that in your worldview, how some characters can do it, how some characters can't, that whole thing is just excellent. And that aspect is also explored in this book. And it's done really well. Yeah, and that and that that ebb and flow of like religion and sciences relationship being tight and then far and tight yeah. and far. Uh, Canical for Leibowitz is another oh, yeah. great example. Um, so yeah, I mean overall, uh, Hassan and I at least love this book. Red I like it too. It. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, it's kind. Of, it's just a, a fun uh, read to have these two like heavy historical tropes. Um, uplift in alien speciation speciation uh meets the arc ship generational ship and um you know impressive again that tchaikovsky successfully made me empathize with giant meter long spiders um so with that uh why don't we talk about some recommendations um brett we'll start real quick um yeah. why don't you why don't you go ahead I'll do I'll do Star Tide Rising by David Brin. Uh, it's part of his Uplift series, and I, I think his best one. Um, and uh, it, just a lot of really close parallels. And Tchaikovsky clearly knows that too. He he calls this like Uplift nanovirus project in the book the Brin Project. So he, this is I think you know intentionally somewhat an, an homage in that vein of of David Brin. So yeah, if you like Children of Time, definitely check out Star Tide Rising. It's a really fun, great book about uh, super small dol- super smart dolphins. And then also, uh, you know, another uh, not uplift, but great speciation book, uh, Fire Upon the Deep. We did an episode on that a little while back, if you want to check that one out, too, um, by Werner Vinge. And that's that's also great, great fun in the same vein um, on the species side of things. Yeah, the biology, like really well thought out biology influencing the culture of the of the creatures like. Yeah, that book is so so good at that. And then his sequel, "The Deepness A Deepness in the Sky," is actually about a spider civilization. I don't like that one quite as much. Um, but if you want <clears throat> literally another spider book, go read "A Deepness in the Sky." <laughs> right. Hassan, what you got? Uh, I have a couple recommendations, but just to add on to that last point, "A Deepness in the Sky." Half of that book is about humans on a ship, and the other half is about spiders on the Earth too. So it's very similar. <laughs> Um, but for my recommendations, I'm gonna I'm kind of gonna split this book in half. If you like the human stuff and you just want a book dedicated about uh, a generation ship and a long journey and you know um, immortality aspects of it and time um, dislocation, I would recommend The Dark Beyond the Stars. It has that same tone. If you want that like dark um, tone that uh, some of this book has with the generation ship aspects, I would recommend that. The other half, if you want more spider stuff, 
please continue and read the sequel to this, The Children of uh, Children of Rome. Uh, if it follows up, and I think the author corrects a lot of his, um, a lot of my issues at least with the first novel, and it's more focused and there's less jumping around, but there's still some of that. Um, overall, it's an improvement. I, I really like the second book, even though I think a lot of people prefer the first. Uh, and also, as a little fun re- uh, recommendation, I'm going to recommend a Voyager episode, Star Trek Voyager, uh, in the blink of an eye. It's my favorite Voyager episode. It's a pretty famous episode. Uh, and it's so similar to this novel. I'm not going to spoil anything. I just highly recommend you checking it out because it's really similar and it's just a fun episode. Even if you've never seen Star Trek, you can just watch it as a one and done. So that's my recommendation. There's also one more that you had yesterday, which was System Shock, the 1994 video game that came out before you were born. That we uh, <laughs> that was such a up, funny recommendation. Some gameplay footage yeah, that of great. it. That was <laughs> that was an awesome recommendation too. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us, Hassan. Uh, this has been really fun. Oh man, it's been a blast. Yeah, um, and uh, everyone else, keep reading, and we'll see you next time. Later, bye everybody. Bye.